listening to the Sermon Audio Podcast from Redeemer Lutheran Church and Pastor Paul Pett. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our gospel reading, and I'm going to read just a part of that one more time. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is our text. Please pray with me. Father, we ask, fill us with your spirit, the spirit who is the comforter, and the spirit who comes into our minds and our hearts and our souls and brings us the gifts that only you can give, the gifts that make a difference when it comes to the burdens that we carry, the gifts that make a difference when it comes to the heavy labor and um, the, the heavy task load that continually is on our hearts and minds. Help us. Help us see in you our relief, our comfort, our hope, our strength, and our peace. In your name, amen. So I want to go back to the question I started with. Have you ever learned something from a child? Have you ever learned something from a child? Okay, see some heads um, nodding. And so who is willing to share exactly what they learned from a child? You can say yes. Okay, Margo. When eight or nine years old, um, he lost his grandfather, who he was with almost every day, very close to him. And I was concerned about what happened to tell him that Brandon had died. So my husband put together the word and said, honey, just so you know, Brandon died. And he said, okay, what are you doing with this car that you're holding? And I was shocked. And a little disappointed in his reaction. Because his thought was, well, Mom, it's not like I'm not going to see him again. Isn't that awesome? Wow. Anybody else want to share? Oh, Julie. Love the unbridled joy that, that children have and the way they look at the world so innocently and so untainted. You know, I, I'm going to share just one with you, and, and maybe it's not earth-shattering. Um, shortly after we, we came here to Redeemer, Mary and I uh, took the youth group uh, to the youth gathering and happened to be down in New Orleans. And um, once we got down there, um, well, I'll back up just a little bit. They asked the, all the pastors who were going to the youth gathering if they would be willing to help serve communion, and they said, well, yeah, we want to have an adult and uh, another uh, couple of youth with you to help serve that communion. So, okay, um, you know, sounds great. And so I signed up for that. And when we got, once we got down to the youth gathering, I ran into uh, the DCE and the youth group from my previous congregation. And so, you know, we talked for a while and, you know, shared some stories and memories. And, uh, and then um, when it came time, to go to that meeting to learn about how to uh, give communion to this massive crowd of kids, um, my DCE and uh, one of his uh, youth group, you know, met us at that meeting. And so we sat together as this meeting was going on, they were instructing us on, on how to give communion. And um, once they had done that, then they passed out a cross for each of the pastor's to wear as they were serving communion so they could distinguish them from everybody else. And so that's the cross. I had some people ask me, where'd you get that one? Well, now you know. But when they gave it to us, it was the medallion and just the string, not attached to the medallion, not tied or anything. And so here's my thought process. Well, I only want to do this string tying thing on this once and I want to get it just right so that I can wear it and 
It's going to look good. It's not very long. I got a big head. I got to get it over my big head, and I want it to hang low enough. You know what? That's, all of that is running through my mind. And then trying to listen to what they're saying up front, well, this is running through my mind. And so I'm kind of fumbling with this and fumbling with the string. And the girl from my previous congregation reaches over, grabs it out of my hand, quickly ties it, puts it together, hands it back to me. Now, you want a tear to flow? If you were in church last week, remember the father with the seven kids whose wife left him? She was number three. Thanks, Lacey. And I want you to, to think about the simple things, because I was worried about making a mistake. She wasn't. She just went ahead and did it. And I want us to think how often in our lives that's the way we are. Because kids aren't afraid of doing what? Making mistakes. How many of you have a kid in your life who knows technology better than you do? Right? They're not afraid. They just jump in. They have at it. We're afraid of it, right? I don't want to make a mistake and screw it up. And so therefore, I'm not going to touch it. Kids are like, yeah, let me at it. Well, we'll, we'll have this up and going any moment. And, and, and the point is, we get tainted by life. True or false? We get tainted by life, by the mistakes we make, by the sins we commit, by the errors that flow in and out of us like water. All of that taints us. And because it taints us, it creates fear within us. And then I want to tie that to what Jesus says here in the first part of our reading. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, my Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. What does that mean? Did you see it already today? Did you see it? If you were watching the baptism, you saw it. God was revealing himself to Leo in the waters of his baptism, revealing himself in the word that I spoke as he was baptized, revealing himself even now. He's a baby. He doesn't understand what you're saying, but the Holy Spirit is working. The Holy Spirit is working on his heart, working on his soul, working on his mind, just as he's working on all of us. And what I found through experience uh, throughout my lifetime is a lot of times as we get an education and we get into academia, we find ourselves further away from God rather than closer to God because all that academic stuff has a tendency to say, I know better. But do we? Do we know better than the creator of the universe? Really? And so when he says this, children are tainted by all our experiences, all our failures, all of our actions. They can just go in. But how quickly that changes. From nursery school to grade school to high school, what happens to the kids? They get tainted too. My experiences of life. But Jesus, yet, yeah, through his word, and that's why Christian education is so important, whether it's Christian preschool, whether it's Christian grade school, whether it's Christian high school, whether it's Christian college or university, that power of the word is coming to us as God is willing it to come to us. Verse 27, listen to this very carefully. All these things have been handed over to me by my father, and no one knows the Father uh, and the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Ben, give me a, a picture, will you? I, 
I don't know how special this is. I thought it was cute, so I put it up. I wanted it, us to think about the way a child absorbs things. Have you ever seen this with kids? You don't think they're paying attention. You don't think they're listening, but suddenly you ask them to repeat back to you, and they got more of it than you thought they ever did because they're just like little sponges. And if the Holy Spirit's working with that little sponge, what's he putting in? All kinds of wonderful, magnificent, glorious things. Things that only he can reveal. Next slide. Ever had secret messages that you wrote in invisible ink and were only shown under ultraviolet light? I want you to think of this. There are certain parts of Take that back. Most of what we have in God's word, we can only truly, really understand if the light of Christ is shining through it. Only by the light of Christ can we know him. Only by the light of Christ can we believe in him. Only by the light of Christ can he reveal himself to us. And that he starts with little children and he continues to work on for you and me. Go back to the reading of Ben. And in the gospel reading, that's exactly what he's telling us. But look at the very last phrase. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. See, we can't do this on our own. We can't come to God on our own ability. We can't come to God by our own choice. We can't come to God by our own decision. And there's going to be a lot of Christian denominations that tell you that. It's your decision. No, it isn't. Because it's the Son who chooses to reveal him to you. By his choice, his choice of grace, his choice of mercy, his choice of forgiveness, he chooses. And it's only by him that we can receive that relationship. Only by him. Can we have that? Because he's choosing to give us something very precious, and he doesn't want it treated like garbage. And what do we see in our world today? If we disagree with you, we're going to treat everything you say like garbage. But he's revealing to us the truth. So what does he really want to do with us? He says it in the next verse. Read the first phrase with me. Come to me. Nope, first phrase ends at the, the comma. Say it again. What's he doing? Just those three words. What would you call that if someone said, what would those three words be called? Exactly right. He invites. Is it limited? Or is it an unlimited invitation? Absolutely unlimited invitation. Come to me. Anyone willing, anyone hearing, anyone listening, come to me. Come to me, especially, now say the next phrase, all who, and is he talking only about physical work? You know, I, I talked to a lot of people before church today, and everybody says, how you doing? I'm tired. I'm tired. It was a busy week for me, too. Service on Wednesday night. Delton's funeral on Thursday morning. Shirley's funeral on Friday morning. And then my sons dragged me all over the Iola car show on Saturday. Literally dragged. Uh, and and I, I want you to, to think about it, how we only equate it with physical. But isn't the spiritual burden heavier? Because how much of a spiritual burden do we all carry? Does it look like this? Now picture that filing cabinet. On every sheet of paper in that great big filing cabinet is one of your sins. 
How heavy is that sucker now? And no one's taking them out of there. They're in there for you to carry. So are you controlling that burden? Or, next picture, is it controlling you? I think picture number two is probably more of the reality. We are controlled by the fears, by the failures, by the mistakes, by the sins, by the burdens that we carry. And so what does Jesus want to do with that? What does Jesus want to do with that burden? Go back to the reading again. Listen to what Jesus wants to do with it. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest. Take that filing cabinet full of your sin, full of your burden, full of your guilt, full of your shame, full of all of that junk, and drop it at the foot of the cross. Jesus wants to take it here to the cross, put it to death, bury it, and leave it there. That's exactly The only way to get rid of it. Only if he lifts it off your shoulders. Only if he lifts it off your soul. Only if he lifts it off your mind. Only if he lifts it off your heart. Because once he takes it, is it still there? It's gone. But you got to give it up. And the problem is a lot of us don't want to give it up. What do we have up here for? No, I can hang on to this. I can bear this for a day. I can bear this for a couple of days. And you think, well, she just didn't want to, you to come off as weak. Now I'm going to point at you. Do you want to come off as weak? Do you? You think you can bear it on your own? Oh, mixed bag of responses on that. The answer is no. I can't bear it on my own. Jesus says, give it up, which means, oh, not much of a response there. Stop holding on to it. I'm not hearing it yet. Jesus says, give it up. Bring it to the cross. Drop it there and leave it. Stop going through the trash and putting it back on. He wants that destroyed off your heart. Because the cross that he gives you, cross of love, cross of compassion, a cross of his mercy, a cross of his grace, a cross of salvation, a cross of peace, a cross of joy, the cross of hope. All of that is in his cross. That's what he brings to us. The controlling burden is gone. The freeing love of Christ has come. The invitation is there. Hear it and repeat it. Okay, I'm getting some of it, but you guys got to all do this, you know. Verse 28, first phrase, say it. His invitation. Are you ready? In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Spirit, and the vibe of the soul. Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com.